Hello everyone and thank you for watching this presentation. I am Jacopo Colonnelli, a PhD candidate at the University of Torino in Italy, and in this talk I will introduce you Streamflow, a CWL-based workflow management system that we developed in our research group to enable hybrid workflow executions on top of mixed cloud and high-performance computing architectures. The Streamflow framework has been designed around two main principles. The majority of the container native workflow systems nowadays allow to map each step of a workflow to a dedicated Docker container in order to enhance the reproducibility of an experiment. What we wanted to do with Streamflow was to extend this feature to multi-agent environments, such as those described in a Docker Compose file or in a Kubernetes Helm chart or on an entire high-performance computing cluster. This can ensure the co-allocation of a diverse set of applications while executing a single step of a workflow, so that the workflow management system can support concurrent execution of multiple communicating tasks in a multi-agent ecosystem. Moreover, we wanted also to enable the execution of hybrid workflows in which each step can be executed in a different architecture while the system automatically manages data movements between subsequent steps. And this removes the common requirement of a single shared data space among all the executors of a workflow. In order to meet these requirements, we decided to augment a standard workflow described in the common workflow language with deployment model descriptions, binding each set of steps with the desired execution environment, as shown in the left part of the figure. This setting can be easily reduced to a standard workflow model by simply adding deployment and undeployment steps to the original workflow graph, as shown in the right part of the slide. This is a graphical representation of the Streamflow logical stack. As we can see in the upper part of the picture, the input of a Streamflow execution consists in three main elements. First of all, we have a workflow description, which is realized using the standard CWL format. Then we have one or more model description files, which can be HPC-oriented scripts, as SLARM or PBS scripts, Docker Compose files, Kubernetes Helm charts, and so on and so forth. And finally, we have the Streamflow file, which has the role to bind each step or each group of steps of a workflow to the desired execution environment described in a model description file. In order to integrate the CWL standard in the Streamflow machinery, we rely on a layered data flow model. First of all, we use the CWL tool to extract a data flow representation of a set of CWL description files. Then, we apply a set of transformations to go from this high-level representation to a low-level data flow model, which can be handled by the Streamflow Runtime Master Worker Executor. The Streamflow Master is the element in charge of scheduling tasks, moving data whenever needed, and applying fault tolerance strategies to recover from failures. Streamflow has been realized in the context of the Deep Health European project as an automation tool to support complex scientific pipelines. In the rest of this presentation, we will examine some use cases to see how Streamflow can be used to effectively optimize some common scenarios in scientific workflows. This is a sketch of the hybrid HPC cloud architecture in the University of Torino called HPC for AI. It combines a modular HPC center called C3S, where bare metal nodes can be accessed through remote SSH based shells, and a cloud infrastructure based on OpenStack, where researchers can access to virtual machines or Kubernetes clusters. The vision of HPC for AI is to enable researchers to have a unified paradigm to access these infrastructures. The goal is to adopt a cluster as accelerator paradigm 
in which users can execute their workflows directly on the cloud while offloading to the HPC center only those portions of their workflows that effectively require a huge amount of computation power. And Streamflow is the tool designed to realize this goal. A first example of application that can benefit from this cluster as accelerator design pattern is the single cell RNA sequencing pipeline depicted here. In this application, a single initial step produces six different outputs that can then be processed in an embarrassingly parallel way by the three remaining steps of the workflow. The amount of computing power required by different steps of this workflow varies significantly. Indeed, the first two steps require a huge amount of computing power because they are computationally heavy, while the third and the fourth steps are much more lightweight and cannot benefit by a strong amount of computing resources. Therefore, here the strategy was to schedule the first and the second steps in an HPC facility, while transferring the third and the fourth steps in a Kubernetes cluster. Streamflow can perform automatically all the data movements required to change the execution architecture. This chart shows the computing time needed to complete the entire workflow in a totally HPC execution, in which six nodes of the C3S facility have been reserved to perform all the steps. Conversely, this chart shows the computing time needed to complete a hybrid version of the same workflow. In this case, the first two steps have been scheduled on the same HPC facility, but the third and the fourth steps have been offloaded to a Kubernetes cluster. As we can see, the time to solution is more or less the same in both cases, meaning that the overhead introduced by the data movement is totally negligible in this case. But the reduction in costs is instead significant, because the cost of an HPC infrastructure is much higher than the cost of uh, standard cloud resources. Another example comes directly from one of the deep health use cases, in particular the use case 4, in which a convolutional neural network must be trained to recognize lung nodules using chest computed tomography scans. In a modern deep learning pipeline, the training step is a complex and computationally heavy process and therefore it can highly benefit from the presence of an HPC infrastructure. On the other hand, the inference step is much more suitable for a cloud infrastructure because on cloud the trained model can be easily exposed to the users by means of high-level web-based APIs to be queried for inference purposes. And this feature is not available on HPC infrastructure because commonly a worker nodes of an HPC center are not reachable from the internet, so no public API can be exposed there. Given that, we decided to use the Streamflow to train the convolutional neural network of our use case on the HPC infrastructure, but then to move the trained model to a Kubernetes cluster to expose it to end users for inference, and Streamflow can automatically manage all these complexities. Moreover, in the context of the Deep Health project, Streamflow also serves as the, as the low-level runtime system for the Deep Health backend, which is basically an API-driven web-based application. The role of Streamflow in this context is to abstract the complexity of hybrid executions and data movements to the domain experts, which are typically physicians with a low, very reduced computer science background. The last use case I would like to discuss in this presentation is the Clare COVID-19 Universal Pipeline, which has been designed by the Clare Confederation Task Force on AI and COVID-19. The goal of such pipeline is to take different state-of-the-art AI models from the literature and to compare their capabilities 
in the diagnosis of COVID-19 disease, analyzing the pulmonary computed tomography scans of patients. And uh, this is important to provide a performance baseline for researchers in this field in order to measure the progresses of AI in the COVID-19 diagnosis and also to compare different state-of-the-art solutions focusing on this specific task. The most computationally demanding task of the CLARE COVID pipeline are for sure the three blocks reported in figure, the pre-training phase, the segmentation phase and the classification phase. Indeed, all these three steps require to train a complex neural network model, which is a computationally heavy process. In the study, two different protein strategies, five different segmentation networks and 11 variants of CNNs have been considered. And uh, if we combine this solution space with the uh, hyperparameters tuning grid, we obtain uh, about 1000 of different experiments that uh, require a total computing time of more than two years when running on a single high-end GPU. Fortunately, all the different combinations of these three blocks can be processed in an embarrassingly parallel way, since uh, every experiment is independent of all the others, and so uh, the total time to solution can be reduced to about uh, 15 hours in the best case, when we have uh, uh, about uh, 1000 GPUs and we can use all of them in parallel. Since uh, this is not the case, uh, we have many GPUs but not that much, the experiments are still ongoing and in this context the Streamflow is used to orchestrate the execution of the different variants of the pipeline on top of the Marconi 100 supercomputer at the Sineca Laboratory in Bologna. So this was the last example for this discussion. I would like to thank the organizers of this conference who invited me to present the Streamflow and also I would like to thank the DeepHead project community and my research group in the University of Torino who made it possible to actually realize this project. I leave here the link to the website to the Streamflow website in case someone would be interested in uh, knowing more about the project and uh, regarding the future plans uh, we are now working on improving the compatibility with the CWL standard because we miss uh, the conditional statements part but we are working on including it in the Streamflow code base and uh, we are also searching for additional use cases to uh, investigate in which scenarios Simflow can provide uh, help in uh, automation of scientific workflows. Thank you and bye bye.